today from inside the historic Harrington School, located in downtown American Fork, Utah. My name is Spencer Stevens. I am the Vice President of Harrington Center for the Arts, a nonprofit organization. Our organization is working to remodel this old school into a community sharing arts center, which will include visual and performing arts studio spaces, gallery and performance spaces. To learn more and to make a donation to this effort, you can go to harringtoncenter.org or even to our Venmo, which is at Harrington Center. We're excited today to be hosting Sentient Academy and Aaron Meads for this live from Harrington. Erin uh, just released a new uh, figure drawing book and she'll be taking us through a figure drawing session today. So let's turn the time over to Erin. Thank you so much. Thanks Spencer, I'm excited to be here. Uh, this is such a great space. And uh, what I thought that we would do today is basically just have a drawing session. So um, like if you were in a class that I taught or we were drawing together, this is kind of what we would do in an hour. So most of these poses are going to be quick poses. Uh, basically anything under 20 minutes is kind of what I um, have termed the quick pose. Uh, we'll start out with two minute poses and then kind of just progressively get a little bit longer and longer from there. And we may take a break here and there to talk about some different elements of drawing, but mostly we're just focusing on gesture today, which, um, I consider to be the most important part of figure drawing. Uh, getting the gesture is basically uh, just capturing the essence of the pose or the most essential, okay? So in two minutes, that's what you're trying to do is just capture the most essential um, qualities in the subject. So I think we'll just get right to it. Um, we're drawing from photo reference today. It's always uh, such an amazing experience to draw from life when you can. So I would encourage you to, to do that, to draw from life when you can. Um, but photo reference is a great reminder. That's, you know, that's what reference is, is to remind us what it's like to have you know, a live um, model in front of us. So that's kind of the mindset that we're going to have as we work from this photo reference is um, you know, what would what would this pose look like if I did have a live model in front of me? And also, the other thing to think about is we aren't, we aren't trying to copy this photo reference. Like, that's not the idea here. In these quick poses, like I said, we're going after what's most essential and what's most important, so you're not going to be able to capture everything in this pose, and you don't want to. Um, like I said, you just want to capture what's most important, and, um, so yeah, again, we're not copying, um, but we're just trying to understand. We're trying to understand uh, this figure, the figure better, and um, how to draw it, how to communicate. So we will start out with pose number one. Hold on, let me. And if you have a sketchbook nearby, you can grab that and draw along or a drawing pad, or you can just watch and enjoy and uh, draw later. It's up to you. Okay, so it looks like we're good to go. This pose is going to be um, two minutes, okay? So. Um. So my approach to drawing is pretty direct. Um, as you can see, there's not a whole lot of um, sketchy lines. Like I know that that's also a common approach to kind of, you know, be sort of sketchy about it to sort of fill, feel the pose out. Um, I just personally am kind of under the the idea that I want to conserve my energy as much as possible. And so I'm just going to make a decision and put a mark, make a mark in there um, to the best that I can right off the bat. The other thing I'm doing is I'm working with a light touch so that, um, you know, nothing's permanent. Everything is flexible. I can change things at any time. And that's kind of just comforting to know that, like, it's not permanent. I can put something down and move forward. Um, 
and just keep going. I, I do try, if I can, to get at least some indication of the face or the facial features just because it gives it a little bit more of a personal touch, personal quality to the drawing. So, I mean, that's not a lot, but just at least some kind of indication of a face. So right here, I mean, we've used a minute 45, and I feel like that's at least, you know, the major feel or the main, you know, idea that I wanted to get across in this pose. Okay, so that's two minutes. What pencil or tool do you use? So this is a General's charcoal pencil. It is 4B, uh, which is extra soft, I think, or maybe just soft. And then I've just got it in a pencil extender. I don't know, I kind of just like the weight of it on my hand. I kind of like that. Um, the other thing about materials, so while we're talking about materials, you can see that I've shaved down the, um, the pencil right here, and then I've uh, sharpened the tip. And then this is just kind of like my little trick, but I angle the, the tip kind of at the top if you see that, um, just because it gives me like the ability to make these soft but confident marks and then I can simply twist it around and then make some really fine like delicate lines from there too. So um, yeah, I also use the um, Conte brand uh, Conte pencils as well, I do the same thing. And um, the only difference with the Conte is it's maybe a little bit, I'm not exactly sure how it's, how it's made up differently than the charcoal, but it's a little bit waxier. And so it doesn't, um, it doesn't smear quite as much as the charcoal. Like the charcoal, you can really get it to smear. And so both of them have like their advantages and disadvantages. Sometimes it's nice to use that, to use the Conte to really um, like force yourself to make a decision and then move forward with it so that uh, you're not like wanting to erase it. Needed eraser is always good to have as well. And then I've got some white. This is just a white pastel or a white charcoal that you'll see me use as well. Okay, so we'll go on to pose number two here. Uh, we'll do two minutes as well. I'm just kind of starting out with um, the big shapes, almost like a silhouette, okay? Um, I find that if you can just get like the main silhouette down quickly, um, it takes care of a lot of the like proportion issues that you might have otherwise if you start from just going from one feature to the, to the next. You know, working general to specific is a theme you know, that I like to, to have in drawing and painting, really. You know, work big to small. So from here, we're just um, using whatever time we have left to only include what's most important about this pose. So, you know, you don't even really mess with the stuff that isn't necessary. Um, Are you squinting your eyes as you draw this gesture? Um, I mean, Kind of, yeah, kind of. I squint my eyes to see value. I'm not really uh, concerned about value too much at this point, um, but I sometimes squint my eyes just to see this big shape too, so that I don't see everything else. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like forcing yourself to, to not see <laughs> in a way, so that you do just see the big, um, you know, the big shapes and what's, what is most important. And sometimes squinting your eyes can help you see those big shapes, like the hair, you know. This is all a big dark value. So sometimes I'll squint down for that. I'm gonna go in with my white here. Just add, got like a couple seconds left. Um, just on plane changes, especially near bone, 
you can add, I don't know if the white is showing up on the camera, but. Yes. Yeah, but that kind of just, what the white does is it, one, it tells you where um, bone is close to the surface. Mm -hmm. It shows plane changes, and then also it gives it more, gives it more attention. So like, this is where I want the focus of this pose to be not say over here or over here you know it just gives it some more information so Elliot has a question yeah how does practicing quick gestural drawings translate into creating a finished work drawing or painting um that's a good question so quick poses are so great because you learn so much from them you are exposed to a lot of poses in a short amount of time so you get like you're adding to your, um, I guess your visual reference bank um, every time you do a quick pose. And what you learn by doing several quick poses is um, how to refine like your decisions and really uh, understanding like what's most important to include in a drawing or in a painting. That's really what drawing is for. Drawing is this unique opportunity to just uh, get in there and study the figure. And um, yeah, I hope that kind of answered yeah. answered that question. Okay, so we'll move on to the next pose. This will be two minutes as well. So here we go. So as I'm, um, you know, getting this basic silhouette in, I'm always kind of relating everything back to the whole. You know, does it work with the whole? Does it work with the whole feeling? Is it in proportion? So right there, you can kind of see like this is a, a good, um, I don't know, silhouette. I feel like it's in proportion, and then I can just go from there. Yeah, so from there you say, what's, what is it about this pose that speaks to me or what is it about this pose that's interesting? I kind of like this stretch here and the bend that's happening on that side. Try to get indication of the face a little bit in here. Ponytail. When you get into the facial features, you always want to keep it soft, especially like if um, if the head is at a distance. Like this is just kind of a small head. Uh, we don't want anything super sharp in there. Just want to keep it soft, but just indicate that there is. A face in there so I only have a couple more seconds I just need to make some quick decisions on what else is going to be you know what's, what else is going to help this this pose read so for this pose it's really good to use some negative space yeah to kind of create that gesture right yeah and you're kind of I mean in a way gesture drawing is sort of like shorthand or like just including a bunch of these symbols, right? So that negative space, like that's just a shape, right? A triangle, mm -hmm. but it symbolizes that there's space. Or like if you saw how I kind of just went in and did these wrapping lines, that indicates foreshortening, you know, like this, this elbow is going back there. Okay. We'll go on to the next pose. Okay, so in this pose, I thought, like, it's an amazing pose. <laughs> and the model is uh, very athletic, and I just love everything that's happening in her rib cage. And so I think what I'm going to do is just focus on the upper body. And that's something that you can do in gesture drawing is, you know, if you want to just do a gesture of a head or a gesture of an arm or, like, a torso or upper body, like, that's perfectly fine. Nobody says you have to always do a gesture of the entire figure. 
Um, but you just have to be intentional about it, if that makes sense. So like the idea is we don't want to be just drawing kind of without a purpose and then we only get to like the head and the shoulders and then you ran out of time. Like that's not really the same thing. When you do a gesture of just the upper body or whatever, like that's the purpose, that's the intention right off the bat. So that's what we're gonna try for here. So we'll do three minutes on this one. Do you have any tips for beginners just to, you know, don't get pressure into the time constraint, but like you said, be purposeful of your drawing. Yeah. And what else? I mean, it's tricky. Like a lot of beginners, um, it's hard to, to look at the figure. And I think the hard part is to figure out what it is that is important enough to include, you know, um, they just look at everything and it's so, it's so complex. Like how am I supposed to get all of this information down on paper well the answer is like you're not it's um it'd be impossible to get all of the information so i guess um just figuring out or just practicing um what you know what is the most important part of each pose and then just going there realizing that the purpose is not to get a perfect copy you're not supposed to get everything um, in each pose, but rather, you know, just what's most important. And a lot of this marking you're making, um, do you talk about those in your book, just so we kind of will be able to decipher what you're doing? The way I make my marks? Or those little symbol things? Yeah, uh-huh. Okay. Um, yeah, I think I talk about it in the book. Um, a lot of that is like, I think it's also kind of personal, like um, when you understand, you know, uh, like when you understand planes and plane changes and uh, bend and stretch and all of these different elements, like you kind of create your own symbols and your own way of, of doing this, which is actually really neat. It's kind of like when you learn how to take quick notes, like a lot of people, they, they take those notes in press conference or whatever, they will make a lot of symbols mm -hmm. to represent a lot of things. And in a way, we're doing that, right? We're trying to capture a long speech in just the essential markings. Right, exactly. Yep, and then the more time that you have, like if you had five minutes for this pose instead of three minutes, you know, the idea is to just keep on strengthening mm -hmm. it keep on clarifying it but at least you've got right from the beginning you've got kind of the main the main idea and the main focus so right now we can pay extra attention on what is different between the two and three minute pose and see how much more detail you're able to add on top of it yeah and there actually is quite a bit i feel yeah. like just even the one minute i said i wasn't really going to get into the feet but we'll just kind of put an indication of what she's doing here, kind of like that thrust forward. You know, so if I had more time to work on that, so that's three minutes, but if I had more time to work on it, you know, I would already have kind of a, a structure, the foundation. All right. Go to the next pose. Kai is here watching. Oh, nice. Yeah, awesome. just a shout out to Kai. <laughs> hey, Kai. Okay, so this pose, we'll do three minutes. Here we go. So I don't always start in the same place every time. Like every pose is different. Every pose kind of speaks to me in a different way and I think that's important to know too, like there's not really a process for doing, the, there's, not, there's not a formula, I guess I should say. There's no right or wrong way to do this. Um, there's definitely like tips and suggestions and there's these elements that I present like in the book, I'll present today, but um, really there's not, there's no one way to do this. And drawing is pretty personal too, right? Different. Yeah. 
people they have a different way to draw and that's kind of how you create different um, say like artistic voice or whatever it all depends on your way of um, capturing the gesture or the information yeah well and even just like what you choose to include mm -hmm. you know like so I said you know a gesture should be what's most important right well what's most important to you might be something different than what's most important to me so it's um, you know it's figuring out what it is that you're interested in and that's what you know when people ask me like well what is most important in a pose like where where should I start where should I spend my time in a pose um, you'll learn that the more that you draw and also um, it's what's most interesting to you you know if you're in a drawing session and you are in um, in a spot that's just not really inspiring like you're not you're not super inspired by the pose like get up and move around and walk around and and see find, find a better view I guess is what I'm saying find something that interests you to draw like I'm really drawn towards foreshortening I love foreshortened poses I know you also paint, so mm. I'm pretty sure this help helps you with the uh, painting skills too. But um, yes, I'm just trying to make that connection because I personally I don't spend a lot of time drawing, and I'm suffering from that. So um, what drawing really does? There there are two different languages for sure. Drawing just helps you see. It helps you learn to see, and in fact you you'll end up changing the way you see the more that you draw. And the more that I'm talking about, the more that you get better at um, pinpointing what it is that's most important in a drawing, like that's what translates into painting. That's what will help you um, in painting know what to include, mm -hmm. you know, know what's most important in a painting as well. So that part um, is the same, mm -hmm. even though they're, they are two separate languages. Okay, so that's, that's all I got in three minutes. Um, obviously, like, I didn't get into the legs here or the skirt or even in the torso, but I got into the arms and I feel like you at least know, like, what's happening in this pose. If you just looked at it, you'd, you'd have a pretty good idea of what's going on. Okay, so maybe we'll do, we'll do one more and then talk about gesture a little bit more. So this pose is, this is super neat. Um, we will take, let's do five minutes on this pose, just because I love what's happening in the rib cage and I want to get into some of the light and shadow. Drawing, as you draw more and more, you're really accumulating your mileage and you can see the, the improvement and progress, right? Oh yeah, for sure. See, we, we both went to school at the same time and you never quit. <laughs> and I can see so much more improvement. Or it, it, you're just professional now, but from, you know, back in the days, you were just a student. But I think that's the good part to know. You know, as you practice more and more and just keep doing it, with a purpose, you will see your skill improve. Right, well, and that's the other thing, like, I feel like anybody can learn to draw at any age. Yeah. Like, you can learn to draw. Um, and where I felt like my kind of acceleration in my learning happened was when um, I learned a couple of these elements that we're, we're gonna talk about, and then just really I went into every drawing session with the intent to just learn more. You know, I wasn't necessarily there to produce a lovely finished piece of work. Like, that was not my intention. It was more to just 
go to these drawing sessions so I can study and so that I can learn. And I felt like when that motive, and maybe, maybe most people do have that motive, I don't know, but when my uh, purpose for drawing kind of shifted to that mindset instead of, oh, I have to, you know, do these drawings for my portfolio and I have to get better, it took the pressure off like crazy. Like the pressure was gone and it was just fun. Like drawing was so enjoyable. And so I feel like that's really important too. a little indication of the facial features here. It's in full light, her face is, so I'm gonna go in there very soft. I don't want anything super hard or dark because I want to maintain that, you know, feeling of light. Okay, and I'll get into the torso here. Okay, I have a little bit more time in these pose, this pose because it's five minutes. Um, my light source is coming from right here. So um, when I'm putting in light and shadow, I'm, I'm going to be really conscious of planes and these plane changes. So this whole like um, top of the torso is in light. I'm actually going to use my my white chalk to demonstrate that. Like this whole top plane is in light, okay? And even into this arm, you know, that's that's light. And then you can see that her, you know, rib cage underneath the breasts, it begins to go under, okay? So that's that's a plane change. And you indicate that um, just with that value shift. Are you using much of uh, anatomy no knowledge while you draw, or you're looking, kind of like what you're saying, you train your eyes to see? It's kind of both. Like, so I, I don't believe that you have to be an expert at anatomy in order to draw well. I think that you need to be able to see well and mm -hmm. understand what you're seeing. You'll find that um, as you draw more and more, you kind of will begin to learn anatomy and you can even study it more, and I feel like that that will be helpful for, you know, when you look up there and you say, okay, I know I've studied that before, this is how this muscle works, and whatnot. So it's kind of a combination. I think that anatomy will help, but it's not necessarily, like, crucial if you have that knowledge or not to, to get a good, good drawing. Um, I'm paying attention to symmetry here in the rib cage, you know, what happens on one side of the body, um, something will happen to that, that twin feature on the other side. And in this case, it's the rib cage, right? The ribs. When you're tackling a longer pose, do your mindset or approach change? Not really. It's pretty much the same start. You know, like I said, this is, um, this is how I would start a longer pose. And just the more time that I have, the more strengthening, the more clarifying I have. So this is five minutes now, and you kind of are just happy with how it turned out. You know, like that's it, it is what it is. And if you had ten minutes, you know, you'd get a lot more information. Um, but still, yet yeah, it's it's only the most important information that you are getting. And it's kind of cool when you get um, into a rhythm or. I don't know, I like to call it f this flow. <laughs> and it, it sort of feels like everything that you do, you're just discovering. Like the whole, the whole drawing, you're just, it's just this process of disco discovery and it's, it's a really neat thing. I love when that happens. It doesn't always happen. <laughs> and that's, I think that's important to accept as well, is that like some drawings turn out and some don't. And um, you kind of just learn from the good ones 
and you learn from the bad ones as well, obviously. Um, but to just kind of be content and be happy with where you are at this moment. And as long as you are applying the knowledge that you have at that moment, like that's all that you can give. Mm -hmm. So um, don't be too hard on yourself. Right, exactly. That's part of the artist's life. You, if you look at professional artists like Michael Mom or Brian Mar Taylor, there are a lot of paintings that didn't turn out to be 100% mm -hmm. and they have a stack of paintings sitting in the back but that's how they get better because they just keep going. Right. right, yeah, and like what you'll find is that exact thing happens in drawing that, um, you know, when you start out you'll have a lot of poor drawings, you know, like really a lot of poor drawings but you'll have a few really good ones and you save those good ones and you learn from the bad ones and the more that you draw, um, that number will kind of shift and you'll have more better drawings and less poor drawings, you know, and that, that, that kind of shifts. And even, you know, after you've been drawing for a really long time, you still will have those bad days and those poor drawings. But um, the hope is like, well, you just won't have as many of them. So, okay, so I kind of wanted to just talk about um, gesture real fast before we do some more kind of longer poses, well, relatively longer poses. Um, we talked about what a gesture is, right? It's just the essential information. Like that's all that a gesture is. So whatever you need to do to um, communicate what's most important about a pose to capture that essence, like that's where you go to first. Um, but then now we're gonna talk about like, well, how, how do I actually do that? Um, and one of the ways that we do that is with bending form. Okay, paying attention to bending form. So this is an element in drawing that was pretty um, crucial in my development, honestly. If this is my simplified version of a torso, you know, straight on, um, this idea of bending form or the bend and stretch is that when one side stretches, the other side bends, okay? And when that happens, these shoulders will tilt and the hips are gonna tilt, okay? So it ends up looking something like this. Okay, so you have a stretch side. This side of the body is letting go. It's just letting go. And then this side of the body, what happens is it doesn't, it doesn't curve like this, it doesn't mirror that other side, it actually bends, okay? And you'll see these fold marks. Okay, that, those are really important. That's telling us that, that something is happening, that there's contracting and bulging, and there's activity right here. Okay, and the features will kind of line up. Um, everything will point to that crunch. Okay, and this side, let's go. This side stretches out. So it's a really basic concept, but very applicable if you, um, you know, continued the figure on down here. Um, by knowing which side is stretching and which side is bending, we know that this side of the body is going to hold more weight, okay? And when that happens, bone pushes closer to the surface and you can use your white to show bone, right, okay? And the other thing that happens is you'll get more bulging muscles, more uh, activity, okay? Where as opposed to like um, this side of the body, this is letting go, so it's gonna be more relaxed, okay? So it kind of just helps you make your decisions um, if you know that this side is stretching and this side is letting go, or this side is bending. All right, so. Let's go ahead and move to the next pose. Right, that one. Okay. All right. So I think we'll do five minutes on this pose and see where we're at after five minutes. It's always a good idea before you just get in there and start drawing to have a plan, somewhat of a plan of action. You know, even if it's only a couple of seconds, like look at the pose and say, what is it in this pose that's interesting to me? I mentioned before, like foreshortening is something that I, I'm drawn to. Like I love drawing foreshortening. And so um, 
sometimes that will be what this pose is about for me or maybe it's the weight you know how they're really um distributing the weight or maybe it's a stretch you know it's going to be different for each pose so it's a good idea before you um just start drawing to have some sort of a plan do you teach do i teach mm -hmm. i yeah i do teach so um i teach adjunct uh, figure drawing at byu sometimes depending on their needs and um, and also working on actually an online teaching platform yeah, yeah that hopefully I can get my um, my course out it will be on figure drawing on the quick pose so that uh, you know, can learn from it we're working on that yeah so that's my project right I'll now. make sure we'll keep that on track for you yes <laughs> I know people are waiting <laughs> well I just see it's just so valuable you know like in my development as an artist and in yours, like we had to travel places to study with pe the people that we wanted to study with, right? Like and that costs money and it takes time and, and not that studying online won't, but it's just, uh, it's more convenient or it's, it's very convenient. So while we're waiting for your course to be ready, would you recommend people to say I go to your website and get on um, newsletter list or something to be notified or sure. what is the best way to? <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. Or just follow me on Instagram. That's kind of where I, I post my latest, latest happenings. Uh -huh. yeah. So there's a little bit of um, drapery in here because she's got the skirt on. Uh, these are little pipe folds, or little drop folds. Basically, when you're doing drapery, all you have to do is find the point of support, you know, where that um, type of that skirt or that drapery, that piece of clothing um, is on, the point of support, and then that's where your lines will kind of draw out from. The further you get into a pose, you'll find that the gesture kind of gets eaten up. Like this first pass, um, it kind of gets gets eaten up as you continue to strengthen and clarify the pose, the drawing. Just in case people are curious where we are, we're in the historic Harrington Center for the Arts in downtown American Fork. So if you guys drive by Main Street and you see Alta Bank, look behind Alta Bank, you will see this huge, amazing building. Stop by and just kind of check it out outside or follow us on the website, Instagram to see, you know, there'll be a lot of um, ac activities going on, live streaming from here on Saturdays, there are music, um, concerts, and just, it's a huge project, 
um, we're working on here. So as you can see, this hallway, it's beautiful. These are original woodwork, original building, over 100 year old original school building. And guess what we're gonna do with it? For the art. I mean, <laughs> so you artists out there, this is the chance for you to voice your interest, support, and all of that. Things like this don't happen every day. And most buildings, they get restored for other reasons. But we have a great nonprofit organization behind this project to make sure this project, this building is actually going to be restored for arts. So when you see something like this, I'm getting chills because <laughs> when I saw this building, that's what came in my mind is this has got to be for the arts. So we're very fortunate to have Spencer, Samarisa and a lot of other sponsors, great organizations and you know, people behind this project making things happen. So I just want to make sure you guys um, take your time to follow this project and show your support. Yeah, this is an, an incredible building. It'll be filled with performing artists, visual artists, musicians, once this place is back to life. Just imagine. Yeah, it's gonna be cool. Okay, I'm about out of time on this pose. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention, though, I get asked a lot about uh, line quality. You know, how do you improve your line quality? So, line quality develops as you develop a sensitivity to what it is that you're drawing um, in particular. So, whether it is bone or whether it's fat or muscle or tendon, um, each of those forms has a different quality. So bone is very quick turning. Um, the way that you would draw bone, you know, would be, would be different than how you would draw like a fleshy form, like the belly or, um, you know, the leg or something like that. So that's really where uh, line quality is developed. It's when you, you work on developing the sensitivity to uh, the form, to figuring out what it is that you're actually drawing. Right. Let's see, how much time do we have? Okay, let's go ahead and do this one. Is that all right? Okay, so I love this pose. I thought that this will probably be like a five to 10 minute pose. Um, so I really want to get into her arm there and the leg that's extending. If you're able to while you're drawing, yeah. can you kind of give a few tips on photographing your model? You know, sure. you want to have good light and shadow definition and all that stuff. Yeah, so um, typically you want a direct light source and a singular direct light source. Um, although, um, drawing from multiple light sources is kind of cool too if you can if, if you keep track of everything but to start off like you're you're always going to be in a good place if you have a singular direct light source um, and then you don't you you typically in drawing and in painting you don't um, model in the the shadows much Drawing you can, you can draw, you can model in the shadows um, a little bit, but typically, you know, you keep those pretty flat. So basically what I'm saying is you just want it lit um, so that you've got like a nice light side and a pretty nice dark side as well, but mostly in the light. That's where everything happens is the light side. Important stuff. So I'm taking a few minutes here probably to just get this head because like I said, like I just try to, to get at least indication of what's happening in the face. It kind of just gives it more of a human quality, more personal. It's really important to figure out where this ear is too because that will tell us, you know, the direction of the head. It's going up or down.
don't see you major much. So you know, a lot of people they think you know artists that kind of um, what is it like you know like they like imagine you holding the pencil up and measuring the, uh -huh, the side stuff. Size yeah, and, yeah. Plumb lining and all mm -hmm. that stuff. But do yeah. you do that or you just establish a different habit? Yeah, I, I don't measure that yeah. much. I do um, when I feel like I have to, but it's kind of like a last resort because, so I, I kind of uh, learned to draw by measuring. Well, I didn't, I, I kind of, I probably didn't learn it that way. I just maybe got a little too carried away with the measuring at first and it turned into more of this mechanical process for me hmm. where I was just, you know, yeah. I felt like I was just measuring everything and it kind of took away the the enjoyment and like the, the intuitive nature. The organic yeah. feel. Yeah. And so um, I kind of found a different way, this more direct way where you, you learn to see it by eye. And I feel like that's very valuable um, to be able to make sure your proportions are on by eye instead of having to, you know, measure okay, how many heads high? And like I said, like if I ever get into a spot where I just can't figure it out, then I, I, I will measure. Or like I'll drop plumb lines all mm -hmm. the time. To, I don't really feel like that's measuring. It's just kind of yeah. keeping things in track. Checking or, position. In check, yeah. So, yeah, I don't. I don't measure a ton. Mm -hmm. I wanted to get into this arm here because... She's got a lot of weight on this arm. And when you recognize that something has a lot of weight on it, there's a few things you can do to uh, make that read. And that is creating some bulges in the muscles. You know, you think about when you're carrying a weight, you know, your muscles are flexing, they're bulging. Um, also, this arm will just progressively get a little bit darker actually as it goes down it's because it kind of curves in in order to keep the rest of the figure balanced um, and then we can look at some planes here um, like I said this is the light source right it's coming right here so all of the top planes are going to be in light and um, and kind of the side planes all the planes that are like basically uh, perpendicular to this light source, those were, will be the most fully lit. So there's actually a plane here, one that juts out right here. So you can have fun with those planes. Um, the down planes are in light still, but they're not, um, they're not as bright as the top plane, but they aren't as dark as these shadow planes either these under planes and these opposite side planes. So drawing is really fun when you get into it or you can just um, you know, pay attention to all of these plane changes and observe the, the muscles and the forms. So I'm gonna go in here, I see, you know, here's that bone. Like I mentioned too, whenever you see um, pushing close to the surface, that also indicates weight. So that's what I want to do. The hand is in light. It's a flat surface there. So this is a plane change, right? Some plane changes in the knees as well. And then some shadow planes here. And keep it soft. All of the form shadows are, are soft. You know, like I mentioned before, like nothing is permanent. We're drawing in a light enough touch that you can make changes wherever you need to. I'm really paying attention right now to uh, texture, you know, the, qual the, the surface quality, the line quality that I had mentioned before. 
you know, this is muscle, it's flexing muscle, this quadricep. Okay, and then there's some bulging happening in the knees. So this is skin, you know, that's a little bit softer, right? And there may be some bone here, but mostly skin. And then it turns into uh, this shin bone, which is gonna be really hard and delicate, you know, and thin. So that's kind of what's going through my head, I guess, while I'm drawing, So I'm thinking about you know, what it is that I'm actually drawing. So plain change on the ankle. I can get in here with my white as well. This is a top plane, right? It's kind of per perpendicular to the light. So it's going to receive a lot of light right here as well, the side of the knee. And then down the shin. And that's actually on bone. So like we said, when it's on bone, going to be more of a highlight. These are these are kind of just planes. I'm just lighting up the planes, but this is actually a highlight, right? Same with this right here. And you could, you know, right on the ankle too, there's some some bone. You might want to drop a highlight there. because where hair attaches to the skin, it's really important to keep that soft. So with your teaching experience at BYU, what are the common um, challenges you see from the students and what are the best advice you've given to help them to overcome those challenges? Um, I think one, one thing that's a challenge for anybody in drawing or even painting or anything that you're doing in life really is, is eliminating distractions. And I think it's so important because a lot of the times we don't even understand, we don't even realize that they are distractions, you know? So um, I'll get students who are really excited. They, they wanna learn and they wanna improve and they're, they're beginners, right? Um, and they get really hard, they get really down on themselves and really hard on themselves and I think it's important to realize that that's a distraction, that allowing those negative thoughts to come into your head can actually be a distraction to you. Um, so it's finding a way to, you know, be humble enough to, I don't know, I guess to learn, but, but like patient enough with yourself too, to realize that it's going to take time and yeah, I don't know, I think that's a, that's one bit of advice that I would give anybody who's wanting to learn how to draw. So I'm mostly just like paying attention to shadow shapes here. When you separate light and shadow, how do you simplify or almost like um, just make your judgment call to say that is shadow, 
Uh-huh. Well, the dark, you know, cash auto is easier, but then the mid-tone, where you find that separation line, like, is there any uh -huh. tips on that? Yeah, you're right. You kind of just have to make a decision and, um, and then just be consistent about it. Distinguishing, you know, what's, what light, what is light and what is shadow. And I think paying attention to those planes, the plane changes, really understanding the light source, where it's coming from, can help you make those judgments. Like, you know, the cheek here, you know, you kind of squint down and it's not quite as dark as this shadow, but is it shadow? Like, should, which, you know, which side, which family should I make this a part of? And you kind of just have to make the decision. And you simplify it, right? It's not like you get in the whole 10 scale, yeah. value scale, mm -hmm. you, you're simplifying down. Yes, exactly. Simplification is like the, the name of this game, right? Yeah. Yep. That's exactly what you're trying to do. I'm going to get in here and uh, get some planes lit real fast. The top planes mostly, and then from the side too, these side planes are lit. So the ear is going gonna, is gonna to do the same thing as the nose. So if the nose, the front plane of the nose is lit, then the ear is going to be lit too. Kind of just a trick. Well, the time is almost up, it's up, but we need more. <laughs> yes, this is the best. Drawing really is the best. So just put these, drop these highlights on the bone where the plane changes are happening and we'll call it good. Thank you so much yeah, for being here today. No problem. Thank you for having me. Okay, we have your website, Instagram, Harrington Center, all the links down below. So don't forget to check it out and um, what is your book called again? So it's called The Quick Pose and it's actually the second edition. Um, it's well, it's the same book that um, I published about five years ago, but it was just uh, picked up by a publisher recently and released about a month ago. So yeah, really excited about that. And basically everything that's in there is uh, my teaching process, my drawing process, and yeah. Thank you. Well, thank you guys for tuning in, and we'll see you next Monday. See ya. Bye.